Good morning, everyone. This is Kim Schmidt, Executive Editor of Farm Equipment Magazine. Welcome to our latest webinar in conjunction with the North American Equipment Dealers Association. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, today's presenter is Gary Johnson, Director of Safety Services with Lytix. Gary works with Lytix clients to structure enterprise risk management programs to fit their specific needs and develop alternative risk solutions to be benefit the transportation industry. Before we get started with the presentation, just a couple of housekeeping items. On your sc screen, there's a control panel with a Q&A icon. You can submit questions here at any time uh, during the presentation, and we will try to answer as many of those as possible uh, following the presentation. Um, the webinar is being recorded, uh, and we will share it with everyone if, who's registered uh, once we've wrapped things up, and you can go back and rewatch it later. With that, we are ready to get started. Thanks again for joining us, and you can take it away, Gary. All right, thank you. Thank you, Kim, and thank you all for joining. I appreciate it, especially on a Friday, Friday morning. I know that's very challenging in itself. Obviously, I think what we're in the last Friday of really the month of July, so how quick everything has gone by, but I do appreciate the opportunity, obviously. <clears throat> Excuse me, I appreciate, you know, the North American Equipment Dealers Association, Federated Insurance, and of course, Farm Equipment. To really provide this opportunity for me to really present to you something that obviously is probably not as well known uh, in the industry, especially with technology, but it's really with the utilizing machine vision, artificial intelligence, innovations in video telematics to improve driver behavior. A lot of words. But with that, hopefully today I'll be able to break down for you really what that means and <clears throat> how you can utilize that and your selection process or utilizing your current technology. So with that first, let me tell you a little bit about myself, just briefly. Um, by all means, Gary Johnson, as Kim mentioned, Director of Safety Services for Lytics. I've had the opportunity of being at the Lytics now for about nine years, but I've been in the industry, the safety industry, for 36 years. So like many on this call, I actually was a farm farm kid, farm boy from Minnesota, grew up on the farm. And just like many in the transportation or safety arena, we never woke up one day saying, hey, I'm going to be a safety person in, in this industry. It's something that I fell into, and I'm, I'm blessed to be in this industry for as many years as I have. It's, it's been a dream just these years of really how exciting it's been. I met a lot of new people, continue to meet a lot of great people. And obviously build on the opportunity to network and really support in how I can both safety and obviously in technology. So today I promise you this is not a sales presentation. I am a safety person. I'm not a salesperson. And really what I want to do is talk about the technology. That's what I want to do. And I want to emphasize sort of through my experience of not only all the years of working for different types of segments within the industry, but also what I have learned, even with the participating in a lot of transportation and safety associations, or, you know, I'm active on many board of directors and committees. So really want to share with you experiences, but more importantly, what the technology is. But speaking of technology, I talk about the years that I've been in this industry. I have witnessed, starting out in the 80s, you know, really an industry that had no technology. We had nothing. Our trucks were pretty much straightforward. Uh, many of them were just, you know, manual transmission. Uh, you know, it's very simplistic. I can tell you that I think the very first technology I really experienced was cruise control. And you, amazing just even some of the pushback or really some of the challenges something as simple as cruise control brought to us. So we have seen an evolution of technology like no other, and especially in the later years. I mean, nowadays, the selection, the options, even from the manufacturer is has exploded. So there's no doubt that we'll continue to see this. So my hope and my plan today is to specifically talk about sort of the technology, but also talk more about you know, the definition and the topic of machine vision and artificial intelligence, or what we say is MVAI. So sort of the agenda of what we're going to talk about is on the screen in front of you. 
by all means, I'll go through these uh, relatively quickly. I'm not going to read the slides to you. I'll sort of guide you through each one of them. So, but first, we're going to sort of get into sort of why. Why the need of the technology? Why have we seen sort of the explosion of the options and the selection that you have out there today? And it really comes down first to talking about the data. We have seen, obviously, the past couple of years, uh, a pandemic that I hope that we'll never experience again, many of us. I mean, the disruptions that we had seen, the supply chain disruptions, just the, the shifting con consumer behaviors, you know, the restrictions, the labor shortages that people are experiencing are like no other. But what we also saw during that time is one key important thing, and that's the importance that business and the key essential business and transportation played, many of which you are on the on the call as well today or joining me today, were essential. But that also brought to it a whole different pattern of really what the need was and how it was delivered. And we've seen over now the past couple of years, just really the transformation, how we're going back. And there's always a new normal, but Clearly, we're going back and we're seeing that on the highway system. So we're seeing that in a, as a safety need or safety demand. And we can see here by the stats that are in front of you, these are provided by NHTSA, which is the National Highway Traffic, Traffic Safety Administration. These are uh, statistics that just were released recently. And you can see that over from 2019 to 2020, there, because of the shifting patterns of the traffic returning, you saw that there was an increase of almost 7% in collision fatalities. At that same time period, you saw about 3,200 of those fatality crashes were directly linked to distracted driving. So definitely something, a change in behaviors, not only during the pandemic with no, with really no traffic, but then we saw it even the about coming back into what I would say into the normal type of employment and back to work, we've already saw the behaviors peak. But when you transition from 2020 to 2021, we're beginning to continually see the concerns. It's, it's the 12% increase in fatalities now between the two years. And we're also seeing because of obviously the increase of traffic, the increase of miles of 12%. So we're definitely coming back, but it's because of these statistics that really sort of proves the worth of technology. And that's why you saw sort of an explosion of the technology. It's how is it that a deliverable by the use of technology can aid in not only the shifting of patterns, but really the overall concern. But the biggest thing is risk profile of what is bringing your company or your drivers at risk. So despite the stresses of COVID and sort of putting that platform for the introduction of this ever-changing technology is really the argument or the base of what is the impact when you utilize it? What is the impact of utilizing technology in itself? And what I can say just on video technology, video technology and statistics from Lytics of our own clients, that even though there was NHTSA showing this increase in road risk, ro uh, risk profile, of course, fatalities, those that utilize video technology actually decreased and they saw the risk profile reduce. So just in you know the difference between 2019 and 2021, sort of the pattern that we I showed you on the previous slide, we saw a 25% reduction in collision. Not to mention key changes in behaviors that will are leading indications, indicators of crash. So you see that technology and the use of technology really has proven its worth. But by proving a worth in, in really this society, we also have to make sure that we're delivering and staying up on the demands and the needs of the clients. And that, of course, comes with the changes, like I had mentioned. So, again, statistically is always one of those key factors when it comes into why technology. 
But when we're really talking into the video technology evolution, it sort of plays in that factor of, of really the demand and the need. So speaking of the evolution, let's go back and take a step back. Like I mentioned, just I'll use the nine years that I've been on this side and really the nine years with uh, being involved with the technology company and what it's done. Video technology, when it when we started out, was very simplistic. It was basically a system that either was a GoPro that had a continual recording that someone would have to go through, or many that entered into the field, uh, the technology delivered uh, what I called triggering events based on accelerometer or G-force or gravity force type events. So what that means is that if you have a delivery or service truck that is delivering parts or you are out on a piece of a tractor trailer equipment, anytime that there was a jarring motion, a hard break, um, pothole, or something or a side-to-side motion, <clears throat> excuse me, what it would do is then it would trigger an event, usually a 12-second clip, and then that would go back to the provider. It would be reviewed by humans, so a human review process, and then it would be identified of what unsafe behaviors you wanted to see. As you can tell, this was a very much a delayed process. It usually took about anywhere from 24 to 48 hours to get that back to you, and it was very much reactionary. By the time you got to me, it has already been a couple of days. You probably had to wait for me to return or if I was out on the road, get back. And then we would uh, talk about or have the coaching or mentoring process. So very much a reactionary. It was still a value statement. It still provided exoneration. It still provided the value, but very much a reactionary type process. So where have we evolved today? Where we evolved today is the introduction of utilizing true abilities of technology and delivering it immediately. So what I mean by that is machine vision, artificial intelligence, MVAI, will take the, the technology in itself, it will read the environment, it will read what is outside of the roadway of what the driver is experienced, but also it will read interior. And if there is any type of unsafe behavior or potential you know, hazard, it will notify the driver now. The driver then has the ability to self-correct. And if the driver does not self-correct or show a pattern of this risky behavior, it will then send it for a coaching opportunity. And even the possibility of immediate notification to his or her manager. But what does that look like? Let me play this for you and just show you sort of what that means. Distracted. <clears throat> so in this case, again, you saw the distraction taking place. The driver took the eyes, their eyes off the roadway, and because of the eyes off the roadway, it immediately notified the driver of that distraction. It then is going to look for the correction of that distraction and then uh, deliver, obviously, uh, uh, a coaching event in the event that, they, uh, that the driver didn't correct. If the driver did correct, then obviously it continues. It continues just to review. There is no additional need there. So again, I'll play that one more time just so you can see. Distracted. So definitely a change from the old accelerometer. The accelerometer in this case, you would have had to have waited about 20 to 20, uh, four to 48 hours, they, a re human review would have looked at it and said, hey, the gentleman had, um, had clearly violated a, or had a unsafe behavior because of the use of the cell phone, and then would have sent that back for review by the coach. Here it's immediate and it's now, it's definitely on demand. And why is that so important? 
many of us in the safety arena, we know what the Heinrich period, uh, pyramid is. Really what it is, states is that for every 300 near collision events, without addressing it, can lead to one major. What you've seen over the years with the transformation and just the video telematic side is you saw the introduction of a more enhanced or more sophisticated type deliverables. And now what you're doing is instead of just stopping at the 300 mirror collisions, you're getting further into those potentials, those trends, those predictive analytics. You're actually delivering um, valuable corrections or valuable feedback of everything from the environment, the roadways, to weather, uh, potentially ahead, animal, a high animal strike area, or risky roadways, risky intersections, that the driver now, when they enter that area, is forewarned. So by delivering this more sophistication of technology, you're going definitely beyond that 300, and you're going into an area that is really now better preparing the driver for their environment, but also by addressing those unsafe acts. That's how we've been able to break through with those that provide the video telematics in itself. Break through that, that, that threshold, break through that line to really deliver more and more of the risk up front so it does not become or lead as a major crash. But definitely some key that we've seen over the years. So I've talked about the machine vision, artificial intelligence, and how, really what I want to explain now is how does it work? How does it really, the sophistication, what does it mean? And especially the video telematics world. So let me start by the machine vision or what we reference as MD. This I would liken it as the eye. This is what the technology reads the roadway. It reads everything in, it, in advance, the line markers, the environment, um, the traffic conditions, what type of vehicles, pedestrians, bicycles. It reads and identifies, obviously, what is the environment. It does that also interior. It looks in to see what kind of behaviors, what are the actions, what is the actual interaction with the roadway outside. So machine vision is the eye. Artificial intelligence or AI is what I would call as the brains. That is what deciphers what it is seeing. And not only will it decipher and interpret, it actually decides what is bad or unsafe, what is risky and what isn't. And by that risk profile, it delivers then to the, to the driver or to the company exactly what is the profile and what needs to be addressed. If it's a driver interior and it's immediate, it obviously will identify that and deliver it in cab. If it isn't, it will deliver it back to the company if there's no change. So very simplistic put, machine vision is the eye. Artificial intelligence is the brain. So that's what really the MVAI is. So how does that interact now? Well, obviously, there's triggering events. You remember I mentioned about accelerometer. Accelerometer is all based on G-force, and then you had the human review. This takes it all in the now. And it will actually trigger, based on what you want to see as a end provider, it would deliver uh, any 12-second clip, if that's what you want, for your own type of management. But it also does so by delivering it in cab to the driver. So let me show you another example of what I mean here. Distracted. So in this case, you had a driver that's reaching down. And this is something very common. And by just a simple motion, you wouldn't think much of it, but reaching down into a cooler to grab something, their eyes come off the, the road, so it's eyes off road. Just the split second. Now, many people would say, well, that's not a big deal, and it's just a few seconds. It's just a few seconds of anything that can happen. And it's 
by having the technology be able to read and to see the artificial intelligence, to see and to interpret with the machine vision, artificial intelligence, excuse me, that it will then deliver it saying, hey, you're distracted. But it's going to continue to monitor that trend to make sure that trend doesn't continue because it's the trend that will get to those risky events that will get to that one major event. Distracted. So why it also is important and why MVAI has been so much important or a valuable resource in the industry is what it delivers. Accelerometer, as I mentioned uh, before, is obviously limited. It's only identified once a human review looks it over. MVAI, because of its ability and the power, it identifies the risk and the risk profile quicker and more accurately. So just when you compare the two, you take the old accelerometer process and now you put the new, the more sophisticated technology in with, with the video, you can see what it delivers more. It delivers 397% more seatbelt violations. It identifies more risky events with handheld devices of 133% or the falling distance concerns. It delivers more of the risk profile for you to then address through your driver network or through your company, which then ultimately reduces the ultimate risk of that one major crash or crash you know, potential. That's the power that we've seen just by video technology providers really transitioning to this sophistication. So definitely a more powerful deliverable. What it also would do is the flexibility, and it's the flexibility of the risk identified with each seat. Old technology, what we used to provide is just sort of a singular, you'd identify what behaviors you want, very much a more box system. By video providers now delivering more sophistication, what it does is really tailors it down to the behaviors in each segment or not in each segment, even within each company, because we know not all, what well, not one size fits all, by all means, every company is different. Even the differences of companies that are on the call today, very much a difference between each other. But with the flexibility of this new deliverable, it provides really the difference of what you can do individually. You're not relying on basically other segments to dictate what your potential risk profile is. It really is delivering your true experience. And as you can see on the screen, it definitely does identify difference between this for different segments. These are real numbers for real clients. So the flexibility is definitely the key because you can't operate or have any technology, any type of sophistication out there that is just stagnant. It's got to be very flexible. And that's what machine vision, artificial intelligence does. So let me uh, show a couple of examples of what this means sort of in real life. Now, in this case, we have to pixelate just for the protection of the driver. This uh, was or is a real client of ours. But you can see sort of now when you watch it, I'll play it a couple of times, but you can see the roadway. We got a condition that's very much weather related. You have environment of which, but also the impact of which the unsafe behavior and how that is playing in this in this clip. So let me play this. As you can tell, distracted on the cell phone because of that distraction, um, basically is unaware of the environment, rolls through a stop sign and then continues down. But I guarantee you in just this short little period of time, that distraction led to this driver being unaware of really what's around them in a condition that should be more sensitive because of the rain or the weather event. So again, what the technology is gonna do, this MVAI, it's gonna identify what is going on. It's gonna give the notification to the driver and it's gonna look for pattern correction or in this case, the unsafe behavior correction. Since it is not a correction, 
what will happen then is that this event is then going to be sent to the to the company for a coaching or mentoring option because the pattern did not correct itself the driver did not correct the pattern which they are utilizing and i hate to say it a lot of these patterns are ingrained they just this driver just did not pick up a cell phone today and decide i'm going to be unsafe today it's going to continue to monitor the power of the technology allows for that to be more immediate and more effective because of the accuracy of it. So let's use another example. This one is a little tougher. I'm going to walk you through it. It does have sound, so I'm going to play and then sort of walk you through it, and we'll talk through it once, once again. But some keys here that I want you to sort of pick out is I know it's pixelated, but you can sort of still see the outline of, of the head and the head motion. And then you see the hand coming up. What this is a true indicator of is fatigue or drowsiness. Uh, with no head movement, a stagnant movement, it's basically staring out, um, very much uh, zoned out. But with the hand movement that's sort of rubbing the forehead is also a true indication of uh, drowsiness. So in this case, how MVAI will identify it is that it will go through, identify the motion. It will identify the typical behavior of fatigue or the head movement not moving or the eyes closing. And it'll actually identify and give an inattentive alert. And the reason why it'd be inattentive is that any time that the, your mind or eyes are off road, it's an inattention. Drowsy and fatigue is a part of inattentive. So the reason for inattentive notification is to notify that, hey, you are not watching what's ahead of you. You're not identifying what's out on the road. So again, I'll play it one more time just for that reference. But so what would happen in this case is without MVAI, this would never have been identified. There was no accelerometer. There is no G-force type trigger an event because of the accelerometer. But in this case, it identified it because of just that motion. That's the power of the MBAI. So speaking of power, we also have to talk about empowerment. We got to talk about the importance of the driver in this factor. How does the driver interact with the technology, which anytime you're bringing any sophistication or any new product into it, into a work environment, you gotta you gotta really understand and know how drivers are going to interact with it. So, very important that you understand and talk with the driving force. So, when we talk about empowerment, something that we've learned, sort of the lesson learned in the industry, in the technology industry, was those past two years. I talked about pandemic years of how really technology had to shift with it. There is a new demand. There is a new deliverable that had to keep up with, it. not only because of statistically, but we had many, much of our driving force that was remote. And we had a lot of, you know, of course, we had to have distancing. We had concerns about, obviously, the interaction. So it was really the vendors and those that are delivering the technology that came forward and said, the demand for more of the now, the driver coaching, the self-coaching, the self-performance review, even down to the handheld device that can deliver all this was key. And because of it, we saw an explosion of use for the handheld and or that deliverable. On a side note and on a flip side of it, when we're seeing younger generations entering the workforce, we're also seeing a totally different approach with performance metrics and coaching and the interaction. We're seeing more that they want the now and they want the ability to see their performance uh, you know, reflective immediately, unlike those of the days of being brought in and doing a coaching or mentoring event. So back to these past couple of years and the change, we really had to see that there was a deliverable here, which was key. But when you strip that all aside, and as a safety professional, we recognize one of the best safety programs you can have is the ability to self-correct or self-coach. 
you have a driving or delivery fleet or a workforce that will do that in their, themselves, you have built the culture, the ultimate culture. So not only will machine vision, artificial intelligence, the sophistication of this being introduced, it also has to coincide with the empowerment. How does the driver or the delivery force interact with it? Uh, what is gonna be that interaction? That's why it's very key. And we have seen ultimately the major change, but the key is that we gotta be sensitive to what the drivers or the workforce is gonna utilize. And one of those sensitivities that we realized is, can you still deliver sophistication? Boy, that's hard to say on a Friday morning. Sophisticated type of technology. And can you deliver it with sensitivity? And many of this, us in the field have done this. And what I mean by that is that the technology has the ability to not utilize the video. I talked about the eyes, the machine vision, the eyes, and then the brain. Through sensors, it can actually still see what's going on inside the cab, but it doesn't have video. It can still deliver the audio of correction without that video. Now, as an end user, you're not going to get uh, sort of that validation or verification, but we there's other demand there's other deliverables. I mean that you can get that through reporting, through you know alert process yourself. So by being in this video technology field, us as vendors had to really look at it and say, how can we be sensitive because of the driver turnover, driver sh shortages, but yet deliver the power of this technology while being sensitive. And that's why it's key to provide this. So as a solution, you should always ask when you're going through your selection processes, how can you be sensitive, obviously, to the driver privacy? Because that's always key, especially when we entered into this, you know, this driver, driver centric type video process or safety correction. So I talked about being sensitive, obviously, to the driver network, but it's also, what do you look for? So we all know, by all means, look at just the change in what's being delivered for uh, technology. We have seen this explosion, and it's just, my goodness, how do you pick? I mean, you go to a conference, and there's a convention hall of just nothing but the new and greatest widget and idea that you have out there. The key is you got to do your due diligence. What drives that engine? What drives sort of what they are delivering? So machine vision, artificial intelligence, what to look for when you're looking at any provider is what drives it. What fuels the engine to give the eyes and the brain? Well, it comes to accuracy. You got to be accurate. Because without it, you are going to receive a ton of noise, a ton of notification that is just going to be doing nothing but give alerts and inaccurate alerts. And what we call that a condition that can happen with your, with your delivering force is it's called alert fatigue. They're going to receive these alerts. It's going to be frustrating. Trust me, you see and hear a lot of swear words when that happens. But it's just, they're going to tune it out. They literally will tune out what the intention of. And with that tuning out could be the potential of then the, act, you know, an accurate event that we all know what would happen. So how do you deliver accuracy? It's all about that technology. And in this example here, I'm just going to play through. There's a lot going on this slide, but clearly you have the grid line and you're looking at the distraction model and the distraction model is cell phone. Is there a cell phone in this case? No, because there's no cell phone. What will happen is you'll see that's all in that zero, meaning the system doesn't detect it. In this case, what we're seeing really is food and drink. And when we talk about food and drink, it, you know, you can't have too much of the accuracy. I mean, if someone's just being hydrated, that's one thing, but it's the excessiveness. You can't drive down the road eating a 12 inch sub. It's just not safe. But you can see with the accuracy model here, what it's doing is with the blue lines, 
when that motion of eating and that motion of distraction is happening, it will get up to that that one score of the hundred percent, meaning I am determining through this technology that's the accuracy. But in order to get accurate, how do you get accurate? How about the data? What drives machine vision and artificial intelligence is data. You got to have the volume of data. How much data is driving the brain? It's that learning process. It's the variety. It's got to be diverse. It's got to know and interact with all different types of scenarios, environments. So not only do you have to have a lot of it, you got to have the variety of data that drives it, but also it's got to have the velocity. It's got to be the speed. It's got to be able to have the data, the different type of variety, and the speed to deliver it in a fashion that it can immediately tell me that I was distracted by what I did. So when you go through and you're kicking the tires and slamming the doors on any type of new technology, you need to really look at what drives it, what's behind it. And in order to get that accuracy, I, I, I offer up, please ask for a trial of that process. Trial the technology. Talk about, you know, put it through a test. Put it through the, you know, controlled environment, non-controlled. Because without it, you're potentially going to see inaccurate type of responses, which then is just nothing going to be a pushback on the driver's side. And with that pushback on the driver's side, of course, is just a potential of a failed type of deliverable. So this technology and everything that's being related around it, you, the due diligence is the key here. Understanding, asking questions, knowing what is going on, how it, how it really works. Because in the other sense, too, what it does is it helps you explain it and communicate it to your, to your delivery force or your workforce, which is one of the last uh, topics I really want to address. And that's rewarding drivers and coaching drivers and why that is so important. By understanding it, like I said, it helps you describe it. With any type of safety program, with or without technology, the key is to address those that are doing things wrong and those that are doing things right. It's called the 80-20 rule or the 90-10 rule. It's you got 80 or 90% of your force that is doing everything perfect. Then you got the 10 or 20% are the ones that you're constantly talking to. They're always in your office. I used to call them friends of safety because they were always on my phone. And it was never for a good reason. It was always a correction, a coaching opportunity, bringing them in. And that's just not the case. When you focus in on any safety program, but especially when you bring in new technology or you have video technology, you got to emphasize the positive. You got to communicate the positive. And I would just want to read this one slide. I don't generally read slides, but this is such a powerful statement. And it says, by recognizing and rewarding those who demonstrate good decision-making while on the road, you'll positively reinforce safe behaviors, further embedding safety in your fleet's culture. A safety culture is not built on negativity or correction or discipline. It's based on success. It's based on being able to really emphasize the positives. I have been a part of many fleets in my years. I've built a lot of safety programs, uh, training programs. And I tell you, the ones that I had to correct that uh, really were failing were those that emphasized everything on negativity. So if you are a company or a fleet that you bring somebody on board and for three days on orientation or onboarding, you tell them that if they fail or if they do this, they're going to get fired. If you do this, you're going to get fired. If you violate this, you're going to get fired. It's, it's negative. If you turn it around and really emphasize the positives, if you do this, this is how you'll succeed. This is how you're going to be a performer. This is how you're going to make money. This is how you're going to go home at the end of the night safely to your loved ones. That's the power of recognition. So 
especially with the introduction of continued sophisticated technology or MVAI, with all this data coming in, don't focus on just the negative. Build and recognize those that are doing things positive. Communicate with them. That's where the key is with the introduction and continuing with any type of this additional uh, sophistication of technology. And I talk about it, and I'll talk about it continuously, and that's communicate. You cannot get your workforce involved in early enough ever with any introduction of technology you're bringing. The more you communicate it, the more you understand it to ask those questions, the better you can deliver it to answer those questions of the workforce. You can ask any clients or any of those that have taken on technology and say, what is the number one thing you would have done differently? And I, I challenge you to ask those questions. And that response will come back as, I should have communicated more. I should have brought the fleet in a lot earlier in this process. Because that's key. But not only at the beginning of the process, but during the process, you continuously have to solicit the fee employee feedback. How is it going? What should we do? What should we change? You know, get that feedback because you'll get the you'll get your sort of self-identification of how it's going. You'll understand how the return on investment is going. So reward, communicate, keys. But the other key factor is obviously coaching. Coaching or mentoring is always going to be a big part of your success. And coaching can look different for each other. Mentoring can look different for each other. So when you have the positive events, how do you recognize those? But if you have those that you do need to address, those unsafe behaviors, are you a program that I'm going to talk to everybody face-to-face? -face? I want that interaction. If so, just know that you might have to change your style of coaching based because of what technology has brought to you. You may have, instead of one unsafe event, you may have several unsafe now. So instead of going through and talking to them individually, uh, each event, are you going to do more of a threshold process, an elevated or escalated type coaching? So, you know, anything over the, under this line, you know, I'll just let you address it yourself. Anything over, you're going to come in and talk to us and we're going to really work through it. The key here is to identify identify the process you want that's best for you. If what you got works, perfect. How can you incorporate your new technology into it? In this case, and what this slide really provides you, sort of a different possibility or approach based on behaviors. Do you want a face-to-face? -face? If so, it's probably more of the egregious types of behaviors you need to address. If it's remote, probably not as bad, probably more frequent. But then as self-coaching may be those that with less risk. But ultimately, it's engagement and the engagement with the coaching aspect. The key, you got to coach. The key is obviously recognize, reward, um, obviously communicate, and coaching. Very key. So with that, the last little deliverables that I really want to give to you is sort of the case studies of what we've already experienced in this industry for machine vision, artificial intelligence, especially, you know, with the sophistication in video telematics. And the reason this is important, um, one, one bit of advice I'd say is that any time that you are going to seek out new, any technology, but especially video with machine vision, artificial intelligence, the key is to ask questions. Not only from the provider, as I mentioned before, but especially in the benchmarking and the networks, you know, ask from your provider directly some, some names of your clients that I can get some testimonials from and I can talk to directly. Uh, I would go as far as even ask, give me the names of some that tested your product that did not go with you. Because you got to get the good, the bad, the ugly. You got to get it all. But, and don't take it to heart. I mean, it's like when you go to buy something online, you look at the reviews, the good and the bad, and then you make the decision. Not everybody is the right fit for uh, each widget and gadget out there. But it's good to have both sides of the fence, because trust me, you come to a provider, 
we're going to give you all the good. I mean, that's just the sales process. But you also want to get the flip side of what's, what, it, what didn't work for them and understanding that. So here's an example, two examples of really just sort of case studies. that go, it, it more gives you sort of some questions that you can ask. So in this case, this first case, it's a thousand truck uh, U.S. fleet and Canada fleet. Prior to turning on the machine vision artificial intelligence, they had about 30 cell phone events per month, relatively low, still concerning, relatively low. Remember, that's accelerometer base, reviewing it. Yep, Gary has a cell phone in his hand. We better address it. So in this case, you'll see prior to 30 events. Then they jumped up to about 2,700 and then worked themselves down. So once they turned on the driver-facing uh, MBAI with audio alerts, you saw a spike because there's more risk. So with that more risk came, you know, a couple of challenges. And that's what I want to read in these challenges. First one, and these are the questions that I would recommend you ask. Why did they enable the driver facing MDAI? Well, the fear of many, and it doesn't matter what business, if you have someone delivering parts or delivering services or delivering equipment, the risk of being out on the roadways is always there, and the potential for that major nuclear crash is always there. In this case, this is a study in which they were very concerned about that risk profile. So that's why they really wanted to address what they felt was a big concern. Driver acceptance was a concern. Obviously, Big Brother was a concern. They're going to lose drivers. How do they overcome that? Like I talked about, they communicate, they discussed it. They had a different uh, terminology. Instead of AI, they use smart technology because sometimes, you know, we that provide this come up with these words and it doesn't always translate to the, uh, to the workforce you have. They had a soft enforcement. So what that means is that when you flip the switch on, they just didn't go after and hammer them. They slowly educated and brought them on. And then, of course, they had to manage the data. They really had to, you know, work that data. Instead of drinking through a fire hose, they did a crawl, walk, run. And they slowly turned on features so they weren't inundated. The drivers weren't inundated. And that's key with any technology and any provider, especially in the video world. You don't, you, you, we can prove ourselves with all the stuff we deliver, but we want to slowly do it. And this was key for them. But I want to read just one of, their tech, uh, one of their testimonials up in the left corner. It says, the driver said other drivers had mentioned the distracted alert. He had not heard it himself. I thanked him for doing a good, uh, great job. And if you were to put that in perspective, you're like, oh, wait a minute. It's broken? No. Drivers have control. In this case, the driver's ability to operate and not have the behavior, didn't cause an alert. So a lot of times we'll hear, oh my God, the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the alert's going off all the time. Well, driver has total control on that. They determine whether or not that alert goes on and off just by how they're interacting. So the last and second case study uh, is sort of the same. Smaller, the flatbed company, um, again, very low uh, cell phone type of events per month prior to turning on the MBAI. But in this case, they turned on the MBAI, but they did not turn on the alert. So they were just identifying. And then what they did is they wanted to see the impact of that immediate return or coaching um, opportunity. So by turning it on, you'll see the dramatic reduction of just that self-correction did. And because of that, sort of the key factors again, why did they enable the driver face in MBAI? Well, they wanted to be on the forefront of technology. We have a lot of clients that that's, they want to be there, but they take it as a different approach as well. They actually utilize it when they go seek more freight or they bid for freight, they will actually come in and deliver or present on the technology they use because not only does it show that we care your product is safe with us your drivers are safe with us or the drivers delivering the freighter is safe it really shows how they're going to protect their their goods and services 
while keeping drivers and families safe. That's key, and I love that. You know, driver acceptance was a concern, again, and not a great buy-in, but what did they do? They had a ton of meetings, communication. But one point I want to make here as well is the, you'll see that it, they really tied it to athletes. You know, we're in an environment now, football is starting back up, the camps are going. And what does professional athletes do? It, it, you know, and I emphasize this quite a bit. They, they look at game film. If you look at the majority of a professional athlete's day during the season, it's watching game film. And what they're doing is they're looking at their patterns. They're looking at their, uh, you know, really the motion, their actions, and they're correcting it by re-emphasizing and by practicing. What do we call most of our professional drivers? I just gave it away. Professional drivers. Just like professional athletes, we're professional drivers. And the reason we are is because the training and education we need in order to get that CDL. So no different should be the professional review of film to make their performance, their abilities honed in and safer. Professional drivers, professional athletes, same thing. As far as managing the data again, they wanted to start out slow. They definitely wanted to utilize and not overwhelm their staff. So again, crawl, rock, walk, run process. But the last testimony I want is, and it's the key, and this is in the upper left green box, the key is to use technology in a positive way. I can't end this discussion enough by saying you got to keep it positive. Emphasize, identify those that are doing it the right way. Communicate to all that indeed this is why we brought the technology on. It's to save lives. It's the protection of life. It's not the discipline. It's really the protection of life. So I hope today with this discussion of machine vision, artificial intelligence, it's really the sophistication that has come within the video telematics. It's helped you understand really where we're going and the path we're going, but how quick we're going. I hope that it has given you some educational uh, support as to if you're going to explore it on yourself and what you feel would be right for your fleet to address your risk profile. But ultimately, I'm here to ask any questions that you have. And if there's anything that I can explain for you further, if there is a need. But I do thank you again. I thank all for the opportunity to be here today, especially on a Friday. Uh, to sort of hopefully set your weekend off right, but give you some of that education that will help you in your process going down the road. So thank you again to all those that give me the opportunity. Thank you for joining. And Kim, I'll turn it over to you. All right. Thank you, Gary. Um, we do have some time if anyone has any questions they wanted to submit. Um, one to kind of get us started uh, earlier in the presentation, you would mentioned that like if if the driver doesn't correct whatever it was then something gets sent to the manager is it like a if they don't correct in a certain amount of time or does something go to them if you know the warning's gone off x amount of times or you know something like that's that. a great question a very great question many in the video technology field will give you the flexibility if it's an egregious type of behavior, let's say that it's a drowsy or fatigue or falling asleep, that notification not only could be delivered in cab to say, you know, inattentive, wake up, but the flexibility of the system is that you can have immediate notifications go to the manager or coach if needed. So really, I, I guess what I would say is it, it depends on how you want that flow. But generally speaking, if it's a general pattern, let's say that it's a cell phone and I pick up my cell phone and it's going to give me the end cap. If my pattern doesn't change within not only a given time period, which with some vendors that could be within the hour it's looking at, it could be with the next five minutes, it's going to look for pattern detection. If the pattern is there, then what will happen is that event it will capture a copy of it and it will go to the actual company or the coach 
and it'll be available within that time frame, let's say the five minutes or hour, that it can correct what I was doing. So a long way of saying that it's very flexible based on the vendor. And generally speaking, it's usually based on the type of behavior and how egregious and how you want that notification to come back to you and how quick. Do you guys have any data on how, um, like how quickly over time, like those habits, they stop doing them. So like they had been on their phone regularly, they get the warning eight times over the course of whatever amount of time. Do you see where they finally kind of like, no, I'm going to keep it away and not look at it? We do. We have that on a, um, it, it can be. The power of data, and uh, I probably haven't managed, ma- mentioned, Lytics is the last part of analytics. We're a data company. So I can speak for ourselves. Uh, we can deliver that directly to the client on a driver level, on a fleet level, company level, or obviously statistically, given we have a large general statistic basis for that. But we do. And it's interesting that uh, the latest statistic for a client, and we deliver that usually on a quarterly, monthly, uh, however they want, uh, usually a client to see is from the alert process to correction or no correction, what that is. And it is mind blowing to see. And you saw it sort of in some of these case studies that I had here that there is a good 40 to 60% of immediate correction. And then what you have is sort of a baseline of those behaviors. It's not the first time I just picked up a phone and did that, like I mentioned. Yeah. It's going to be the pattern. It's that 10 or 20% that you're going to work with that. But generally speaking, yeah, the statistics are overwhelming of how really the correction is immediate. Okay. Any other questions? Otherwise, we can wrap things up. All right. If you think of something, Gary's email address is up on the screen right now. Um, feel free to, I assume feel free to reach out to you directly, Gary. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Well, and oh, we just got one through. Um, awesome. I have a lower your premium reward on my auto insurance policy, which uses an app from my phone. Problem is you need to manually go into the app to change the data reporting if you're not the one driving. So if you're the passenger and I forget which does affect my rating. Any thoughts on that? Did that make sense? I am not an insurance person. I'm a safety guy. So (laughs) I would definitely emphasize to contact your insurance provider. And I bet they will help you out. So now, the struggles you have, trust me, I have that all the time. I have to give my phone to my grandson in order to do it. So, But ultimately, I would say that's a question for your insurance provider. I I can't help you there, unfortunately. But good question. Thanks for asking it. Okay. Um, Well, with that, we will wrap things up. Um, On behalf of Gary, the NAIDA team and the farm equipment team. Thanks for joining us for today's webinar. You'll get a short survey that'll pop up once uh, you leave the webinar. Please let us know what you thought and if there's any other topics you'd like us to cover in the future. Thanks again, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day and have a wonderful weekend.